All right, well, welcome to another episode of Steelers Today, a special post-game edition of Steelers Today. I'm your host, Eddie Provident. With me is Dale Lawley, who is coming to you from SoFi Stadium in Los Angeles. Uh, so did you get the vacation in Los Angeles, or was this strict, strictly business to, this week, Dale? It's always strictly business. I mean, that's just the way it is, you know. Yeah, yeah. Listen, we could talk – about all kinds of things with this game. We could talk about maybe questionable play calling. We could talk about the defense, uh, defensive struggles, um, you know, with TJ Watt, Joe Hayden, and uh, Minka Fitzpatrick not in the lineup. Um, but really, this game, the story is the fourth quarter. <laughs> yeah, it was as crazy a fourth quarter as I think I've maybe seen in, in a long, long time. Uh, the Steelers come back from 17 down to actually take the lead. Uh, and then immediately give it up, uh, you know, just a, a, a quick, uh, you know, a, a big strike. They, they, they blew a coverage, uh, gave up a 53-yard touchdown. And, you know, you, you mentioned those guys that they were missing. Well, that's what you were missing there. I'm not saying that, you yeah. know, that the Chargers still don't score in that situation. I'm, I'm not saying anything of the sort. But I do know that if Joe Hayden, if Minka Fitzpatrick are in the lineup, they probably don't blow that coverage. No, no, I agree with you there. So – I guess this is my question. Is it just the way this game was going? Was it just one of those games? Or did something happen for the offense where they started to figure out the passing game a bit? Well, I mean, I think the, the you know, the, the pump block certainly changed the momentum. Yeah, um, that's that's for sure. Yeah, that that's was true. The first Chargers punt of the game. Uh, it's yeah. The only punt of the game for the Chargers, and it got blocked. So, you know, that was a big momentum shift. The Cam Sutton interception uh, off the tip pass by, uh, by Cam Hayward allowed them to they get – two really short fields and they cashed them both in. Um, you know, it, it's, you look at that, everything that happened, um, you know, even the, the, they just made so many crazy things happened in this game that that punt block was actually a re-kick uh, because there were fouls on both teams on that, on the kick. And so they had to do it again. And lo and behold, you know, they, they get a miles killer group uh, block there that kind of turned the yeah. game around for them a little bit. Uh, you know, the Steelers were struggling defensively. They mm -hmm. struggled defensively all night, uh, given the guys that they were missing. That shouldn't be a huge surprise to anybody. Um, you know, when you're, you're missing, uh, you know, you've got five guys on defense who have been to a Pro Bowl. Uh, you're missing three of those. You've got, you know, essentially four all-pro players or three mm -hmm. all-pro players, I'm sorry, on your defense. You're missing two of those guys. So, you know, you needed some of those younger guys to, to make more plays. I thought Alex Highsmith played well. Um, you mm -hmm. know, he did his T.J. Watt impersonation as, you know, as well as he could. Anyways, he had a couple of sacks in this game and it affected the quarterback. Uh, but, they, you know, Cam, Cam Hayward was Cam Hayward. I thought Sutton played well, um, you know, but they didn't get enough of, of the big plays. And, you know, Justin Herbert's a good quarterback. He's, he's, yeah, he is. You know, he beat them with his legs a couple of times. I think that's where he really missed – having Watt out there, you know, again, I'm not saying that if they have Watt necessarily that they win this game, but, you know, I think by my count, he ran six times in this game, Herbert for over 90 mm -hmm. yards and five of those were on third downs that he converted in the first downs. A couple of 18 some, yard runs. Yeah, yeah. Including some really big chunk runs, a couple of 18s, uh, 23. Uh, so he, you know, he really hurt the Steelers with his legs. Yeah. I was going to ask you about like kind of going to the, the, the Herbert thing. Do you, is this what you expected from this defense, or was this even below the line for what they had? It's tough to say. I, I knew they were going to struggle in this yeah. game. I mean, the Chargers have a lot of weapons, uh, but they had been struggling a little bit as well. Um, you know, but you knew at some point they were going to snap out of the little funk that they were in. Um, you know, unfortunately for the Steelers, they happened to do it in this game tonight. And you know, I kind of expected that. I expected Herbert to have a better game. Uh, you know, it's on national television. Uh, and, and they just came up with a good plan. They, you know, early in the game, they were identifying a color weather spoon matched up on Mike Williams. They, mm -hmm. they hurt the Steelers on a couple of throws there. Again, Herbert, you know, beat them with his legs a little bit. And Austin Eckler is a really good football player. He scored four touchdowns yeah, he in this game. He, he, I think he's an underrated football player too. He never is mentioned in the top five running backs in the NFL. He's never mentioned with the big names, but he always is productive. Man, he's he's always doing something for that Chargers team. Uh, I guess the last question I have for you is going to be on the offensive side of the football. Um, we again saw the Steelers inside the 10 yard line. I believe it's five or six yard line. Uh, one run to Najee and end around to chase Claypool. 
and then a couple of passes. They go for it on fourth down, which I actually liked going for it on fourth down. I just didn't like the play call. Uh, I think that if you're going to go for it there, then you should probably run the ball on third down, in my opinion. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I certainly get that. Um, you know, then at least you have a couple of cracks at it. I'll yeah. be honest with you. I was sitting there in the press box, and when they motioned Najee Harris out of the backfield and Firemuth went to the wing, um, I call it, I, this is going to be the inside toss to the Friermuth. If I knew yeah. that, obviously the Chargers did the Chargers, well. And it, they didn't look surprised at all. They were not. Uh, Derwin James yeah. sniffed that out perfectly. Again, the Chargers have good players. They just yeah, they haven't do. played super you know, well. Um, this was going to be a tough game no matter what. Uh, it's the first loss for the Steelers in, in over a month. Um, you know, fortunately for them, that you know they've they've got everything still ahead of them. Um, mm-hmm. You know, two big games coming up, up here in the next uh, two weeks. Uh, you go to uh, Cincinnati to play the uh, the Bengals, and then you come home and you get the ch- a chance to host the Ravens. So, see how yep. that goes. Uh, do you look anything into uh, Najee only getting uh, 12 rushes? I mean, I, I realize that they're down big in the second yeah, half, I, especially the fourth are quarter. People complain about, well, they didn't run the ball enough. It's game script. You were down, yeah. you know, you're trailing the entire second half. Uh, you get down by 17 points. You know, he had nine carries in the first half. Um, you know, he, That's a little light for my yeah. liking, but, well, uh, but, you know. But, again, they only had the ball. Uh, three that's true. Yeah, that, that's, that's true. That that first possession. drive was an eight minute drive, and then the Chargers answered back with about a six and a half minute drive. So, yeah, yeah that's just you're right the there. Ball enough. Yeah, yeah. Um, any other takeaways for you, Dale? Uh, we're trying to keep this one short so you can get uh, so you can get out of the stadium. You anything else you wanted to touch on, or anything else you thought noteworthy? Um, you know, just the, the injury stuff. Uh, Najee Harris is okay. He he got banged up a little bit. Uh, I guess J.C. Hassenauer had a, a shoulder in this game. I'm trying to think of what else. Uh, Eric Ebron, who scored a touchdown, uh, he has a little bit of a knee injury as well. So we'll see what they get back next week. I would expect Watt to play next week, uh, just given on what I uh, what I've seen uh, or saw last week in practice. Uh, mm-hmm. We'll see about Joe Hayden. Uh, obviously, I think they'll get Minka Fitzpatrick back as well. So you know they need all those guys uh, ready to go. And um, you know if they can get these kind of games out of Alex Highsmith moving forward, and he's He's played better after a slow start. Uh, you know, they didn't have either Highsmith or Watt in that first game against the Bengals. I think that'll make a big difference yeah. against the Cincinnati. Yeah, I agree with you. Yep. Uh, yeah, that's, I mean, you pretty much covered everything I wanted to cover, too. So, uh, won't hold you back any longer, man. Uh, for Dale Lawley, for DK Pittsburgh Sports, I'm Eddie Providence. This has been Steelers Today. 